Today I'm going to be talking about how to safely operate the CHA Mark 50. The Mark 50 is an evaporator capable of electron beam and thermal evaporation of metals. The main hazards associated with the evaporator are high voltage and high temperature. If ever the machine goes into an unsafe state, we can always hit the emergency off button to safely shut down the tool. Before we use the tool, we want to verify that the tool is in a standby mode and that no one is currently using the tool. To do this, we will first look at the GUI to see that there is no active processing going on. We also want to verify that the pressure is below 10 to the minus 7 and also we want to see that the cryo and water pump are to spec. We can verify these with these normal temperatures here and the current temperatures here. After verifying that the Mark 50 is ready to use, you want to first sign in on the clean room computer. You can do this by logging in with your username and password. In addition, we want to start filling out the logbook. We're going to be filling out the logbook throughout the whole deposition, but it's a good idea to start filling it out right at the beginning. Before we open the chamber door to load our samples, we want to make sure that all our samples are already mounted onto a wafer. And you can see that I did that using the vacuum tape here and that all of our wafers are ready to be loaded. The Mark 50 is capable of loading up to 32 wafers per deposition. Thus, if it's necessary for you to load a large amount of wafers, it might be a good idea to remove the wafer planetary. If this is necessary for your run, please check with staff beforehand. Now that our wafers are ready to be loaded, we can come here and vent the chamber to open the door. In order to do so, we first must log on onto the tool itself. To do so, I'm going to click log on. I'm going to go to enter my name. and The name is going to be ED. Then you're going to want to enter the password. The password is just simply R-A-G. Then you can click done and now you can see that these options are now available to select. We are now ready to vent the chamber and I'll do that by pushing vent. You can see that after I push vent, the GUI will start showing an animation of gas going into the chamber. We can also see that the high vac is now closed. We can see that the soft vent has turned on and we can verify that the chamber pressure is starting to rise. Now we can see from the graphical user interface that the chamber is full of purged nitrogen. Now that the chamber is back to atmospheric pressure, we can open the chamber door. After doing so, we push standby and that will stop the venting. We can pull the door out and pull the door down. Once the chamber door is open, it's a good idea to inspect the condition of the chamber to make sure things like there's nothing obstructing the crystal monitor, there's no metal flakes peeling off. We also want to check that the glass slides are transparent in order for us to, to monitor the electron beam during deposition. If there are any issues with the chamber, please check with staff. And now we can begin to load our wafers. To do so, we will remove the placeholder wafers and replace them with our own samples. You want to verify that when you put your wafers on that they won't wiggle during deposition. Now after we have securely loaded our wafers, we're going to need to measure gold. In order to do so, what we need to do is on the GUI, first we need to click password and then push M. This allows us to go into manual mode to manually remove the gold crucible for measuring. Once we're in manual mode, we first want to open the e-beam gun shutter. You can hear that the shutter is open. And then we can go to rotate gun and rotate it to pocket 3 where the gold is located. Even if you aren't using gold, you want to rotate the turret to make sure it's not stuck from a previous deposition. 
Now we can see that the gold is loaded and now we can remove it using a pair of tweezers. Now I've removed the gold crucible, we're ready to measure our gold to see how much gold we will consume during the deposition. But we want to double check that the carbon spacer is not stuck to the crucible and that it's still in the pocket. I can see it's still in the pocket, so that's okay. And now I'll come over and I'll mask the gold. Record the value of the, the gold mass in the logbook. After I have measured out the gold, I can put the crucible back into the evaporator. And once again, I want to make sure that that carbon spacer is in there. Making sure that the crucible is nice and flat, I can push the shutter button to close the shutter again. And now I'm ready to close the chamber door. Now that the wafers are loaded and the gold has been measured and put back into the evaporator, we're ready to pump down the chamber. To do so, we're going to want to close the door and make sure that the seal is not compromised. We want to put one hand on the chamber door and then press pump down. Then we want to verify that the roughing pump gets turned on and that the pressure in the chamber starts to drop. If this fails, you might have to try redoing it a couple times to make sure that the seal on the door is okay. Iron gauge 1 is for the cryo and iron gauge 2 is for the chamber. During roughing, we can see the pressure drop from the reading from the thermal couple. We can also verify the pressure drop in the chamber by looking at the cartoon and the graphical user interface. After the chamber pressure reaches the set point of 1 times 10 to the minus 1 tor, the high vac valve should open, allowing the chamber to pump down much faster. Now we can see that the high vac is open and the pressure has dropped to 10 to the minus 5. And now it's going to pump to the next set point, 5 times 10 to the minus 6. While the chamber is pumping down to low pressures, we can go ahead and input our recipe. To do so, we're going to go to the recipe panel, push F6 for program, go to the process directory, and now we have a directory of all the processes for deposition. Using page forward and page back, I can find my necessary recipe. Today I'm going to run recipe 24. So I'll go up to 24 and then select, push F4 for select active process. Once I press that, we can now verify that the active process is 24, which means that we successfully loaded our recipe into the computer. Once the tool has reached the set point of 5 times 10 to the minus 6, we can go ahead and tell the tool to begin the deposition process. But in order to do so, we need to make sure that the high voltage source is on. To do that, we're going to go around to the side here and simply flip this switch on here. That makes sure that the high voltage is on. Once the high voltage is on, we can go ahead and push F1 to do an automatic run. You can see that the recipe that's loaded is number 35. So I mentioned that I'm trying to run recipe 24. To change this, I'll click the number and input 24 and do OK. Once I push OK, the tool will automatically continue pumping down until it's reached its deposition pressure. Once the chamber pumps down to 10 to the minus 7, the deposition is going to automatically start. So we can verify the pressure from the ion gauge here, and then we can see that the graphical user interface goes into a deposition mode. Deposition should be fully automatic, but the user should verify that everything's running smoothly, including turret rotation, shutter opening and closing, and most importantly, metal thickness. We also want to verify that the wafer planetary is rotating, which is indicated on the GUI by a green cartoon next to the rotation forward message. We also want to check the sweep control panel to verify that the E-beam is sweeping in pattern 1. We should also check that the sweep is hitting the crucible by looking through the glass window on the door. In the logbook, you're going to want to record the values of the voltage and the current at the instant the shutter opens. 
after your deposition is done, there's a cool down period. This cool down period is 30 minutes. So you must wait 30 minutes before you vent the chamber. Now that we've waited 30 minutes for the evaporator to cool down, we're ready to vent our chamber again. To do so, you simply want to just hit vent again. And this will slowly introduce gas into our chamber. We can once again verify this by the cartoon in the GUI and from the pressure gauge. We want to make sure that the high vac successively closes during venting. Now that the chamber is vented back towards ambient pressure, we can go ahead and open the door to remove our wafers. Once again, we hit standby to stop the venting and we can pull the door down. Now, we can unload all of the wafers that we just deposited metal on. Since we use gold, we're gonna have to go back into manual mode by pushing password, M, enter, manual. Then by opening the shutter, I have access to measure the gold again and record in the logbook the gold consumption for that run. Now that I've measured my gold consumption and removed my devices from the chamber, I can go ahead and close the chamber back. To do this, we just close the chamber door and then we can push pump down to pump the chamber down. After the chamber pumps down, you want to verify that the high vac is once again turned on and that the chamber is pumping down to the set point. Once the pressure reaches the set point of 5 times 10 to the minus 6, you can go ahead and push standby to finish your recipe. You want to verify that you also turned off the high voltage source and that you log off the INRF computer.